All right. So uh, I am uh, Coach Ryan here. I am here with my daughter, Raya. Say hi. Hi. So we're going to go through. We saw a question on uh, the Pathetic Triathletes group uh, looking for advice. Someone's got a beautiful, uh, looks like a hammer, uh, Cyclops, that they got their bike on. They want to know what's the best app for getting their work or workouts off training peaks into the trainer. So uh, being a coach, I've done this several times where I've built apps or I've built uh, workouts and training peaks. And my athletes uh, have needed to get them over to Zwift or some other application to do them. Because uh, I made a comment, you know, that's, that's a fun little uh, JPEG there or GIF. Um, so I made a comment. Uh, I use Zwift to build them. Uh, if you build it in Training Peaks, you export it to Zwift. So there's nothing really to do except just export the file and put it in the right place so Zwift can read it. So uh, one of my athletes, Paul, and he's like, I've been building them by hand in Zwift. How do you use this ex export work? So it's a great time to explain it, uh, make a video for all time posterity. So I can just point people to this question later. So ignore all the stuff in background, go to training peaks, launch your app. And right now I'm logged in as my athlete profile. Um, so just to demonstrate that anybody can do it, you don't have just to be a coach um, and, and do as I say, not as I do. I don't have my plan in here. So I'm, you can see all my past workouts. So don't overanalyze any of it. So basically, I've got a workout library um, that I use. Um, so if I make a workout, I put it over there. If I want to use it for myself or somebody else for later, it uh, makes it very convenient. So let's say tomorrow I did a ride today, uh, Tour de Zwift, stage eight. So I didn't need a workout. Um, but let's say you want to make one. So you add the plus sign. You want to build your bike. So tomorrow I've been wanting to put in some speed work. So I'm going to do a bike speed sets and I'm going to make it uh, uh, try to keep it around 60 minutes with me here kiddo mm -hmm. okay so nothing too crazy okay yeah. so I'm just going to put my title in here for a duration of 60 minutes uh, distance I just kind of plug a number uh, I'll just do 20 miles for now um, you know I may or may not hit that but who knows so you go uh, before you do anything else you know just plop it in there you hit the build workout that highlights, you hit it. Uh, I do most of my workouts, you know, I have a smart trainer, it shows power, so I do it by functional threshold power. Um, so if you do that, it automatically reads whatever your FTV is for your profile on Training Peaks or Zwift and applies it. Uh, I'll show you later in Zwift how you can actually kind of change that if, if you're having a tough week and you're not feeling like you could hit your peaks or whatever. Um, so that's how I do most of them. I do it by duration, you can do it by distance, but uh, I just do it by duration, just to, and I do a target. Um, I don't like to hit a range. It just kind of makes it more simple to build it. So these are your little blocks you want to do. So I do a little warm up. Just want to get the legs spinning. Uh, I drop that in, warm up. I don't know you can change the title if you want to. I do five minutes, forty five percent of your FTP. So I think my FTP is like two hundred and eighty or something like that. So ninety watts, something pretty low. Uh, you know, like 60 just to get the legs moving pretty good. Um, so I do five minutes of that. I like to do a little, uh, warm up, step up. Any questions so far? What is a step up? So a step up is where you have an interval where you're doing different little steps. So like three steps. So uh, actually I don't want to do this one. This was a little bit better. That's ramp up. So as I'm doing my warm up, after I get that done, I'm going to come over and I'm going to do like a little ramp up to really get the legs moving. Uh, it's not really a main part of the workout. It's just kind of get the blood pumping to the legs. Uh, so the ramp up, um, like I said, I'm, I'm not too intent on titles. Um, so three minutes is a good one. You know, 75% of FTP. So you're starting to challenge yourself a little bit. Get up to 80%. And I just do it for a short amount of time. Like I said, this really isn't like any a main part of the workout. 85% and do it for a minute. <clears throat> so basically what you're doing is going through this last one. Uh, yeah, we'll do this for three. And as you play around with Zwift or uh, Training Peaks and making your workouts, you can kind of add different little things in here. So one at 90%. So at the end, we're getting a little bit challenging, getting warmed up. And then after that, another little cool down period, a little bit of recovery before you get into the main set. Um, you know, 
warm up, cool down. You can put whatever you want in there and just make it, force it to be whatever you want. So three minutes, let's do 50%. So just kind of spend a little bit, get a little bit of recovery. So then I want to get into our, uh, let's see, let's do three steps. Cause I want to make this a speed workout to where you're really cranking it up. Uh, and by speed, I mean, you know, you're going to be doing maybe a hundred percent of FTP or maybe 110. So it's like 220 Watts. Let's, let's do 115. Just see what that ends up. So like I said, once you build it, you know, once you drop it into Zwift, you can kind of play with your FTP. So you can put these intervals that is kind of more applicable for you. that you think you can handle. And when you're doing it, you know, when you're really getting into uh, above 100% FTP, you know, 30, not 30 minutes, zero, zero, 30 seconds. You know, I wouldn't go much beyond 30 seconds, um, especially at that high output. Um, King's range, uh, you can't put that on there. I, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, I don't do the lap buttons mostly because most of this is meant to do indoors. Um, because maybe if you forget about it, you can hit the lap button, but just it's a lot more thinking than you really want to be doing when you're doing your workout. So when you do recovery, I do two to two and a half times the time it took to do the set. So for 30 seconds, if you did two times it, you'd be a minute. I like to get a little bit more recovery in there. So two, and you're doing, no, let's do 50%, even 45, 40%. So you really want some recovery. You, you want to hit it hard and you want to come back. Um, see if I can that step I don't want. Like I said, I mean, it'll put its own titles in there so you can make it whatever you want. Sprint. Cover. Easy. Yeah, I mean, there's different ones. I think I did a, a three step. You could do a two step. Um, and if you made a mistake and did it, you just put zero in there. So it'll just skip right over it. Zero, zero. And I do so five seconds. So whatever you can, you can split it up. One at forty percent, another one at forty percent, so that you can feel super special. You do all your sets. So basically, you know, so so far it's built a workout, and we've got a total of. Let's see what the total time has come to. Uh, let's delete that and see if it'll come up with a time. So let's do five sets, see if it comes up with it. So 26 minutes. So for these, I mean, you're going to end up doing, and it's going to be a fun workout. So 10 sets of it. Ah, wrong one. Ramp up. I just want to do one set of the ramp up. The sets I want to do 10 times. So we've come up to 37 minutes on working out. That's a lot. Yep. <laughs> Let's do one more just to see. So basically you're coming through and you're just hitting the speed sets. You know, you can even make your uh, recovery time a little bit more, a little bit less. Like I said, in the work, workout builder, you can do pretty much whatever you want, kind of play around with it. Um, so then at the end, you do a ramp down. Drop it in there. Wait for it to drop. So then you do a ramp down and we're up to 54 minutes. So... Go down to your ramp down, four steps, and then you could also change. So this repeats. You can change your ramp up, how many steps you want. Um, so does it have a limit on how much you can put on there? Uh, how many of these little blocks you yeah. can put in there? Um, not that I've seen. Uh, I haven't built – most of my workouts are an hour and a half. Uh -huh. I've never run into a problem. I guess you could build a five-hour workout if you really wanted to. That sounds like a lot of fun riding your bike, staring at the TV for five <laughs> hours, doesn't it? Well, maybe I wouldn't be staring at the TV, but okay. that hurt my eyes. Yeah, staring at the floor. Staring at outer space. But potentially, I mean, you could you could build a pretty long workout in here. You know, if, especially if you're gonna do a, you could do a long ride. You're riding for 30 minutes, and you want to do a set at zone three for 20 minutes. Another set is zone two for 30 minutes. So, I mean, the nice thing about this is when you plop it into to Zwift, it'll automatically change resistance on your bike, so you don't even have to shift. You don't have to think about it. You're just riding along and it does it for you. So um, not that I advocate not riding outside ever, um, but it's pretty convenient and pretty handy to get the exact workout you want. Uh, so ramp down. 
I think I'll just kind of leave it, what is that, three minutes, three minutes, three minutes, and you're just reducing uh, your wattage every time. And then we'll do a cool down. And uh, there you go. So your cool down, 10 minutes, 45%. So we've magically gotten to an hour and four minutes. So description, also add in there, distance is estimated plus average speed. So don't pay attention to that. Simple little note, like I said, I just plugged in that 20 miles. Who knows if that's really how far you're gonna go on your trainer or whatever. So basically, so speed sets, we got 12. You can put 12 sets in there. So maybe uh, speed sets times 12, because this is gonna be important because this will carry over into your file, the actual name of the workout and who it's been built by. So save and close. So you built a workout. So there's two ways to do it. So you can go to Zwift, sync, train, keys. So you can go to Zwift and you can connect your training peaks to your Zwift. The trick with that is if you do a workout on the program for Zwift and you do you record it on your watch in training peaks you will have two workouts show up. It'll fill one and then it'll have another bike one. So it'll get one that's recorded by your Garmin if that's synced and one by Zif, Zwift. So that's why I personally don't link it because it carries them both over. But if you link them and the workouts the day before, it should swing, sync with Zwift and have that workout already ready for you. You can just pick it in the drop down menu. So if you're uh, firing up your Zwift, and you probably can't see that because I have not shared my screen. So share my screen. Have you even seen this program? You've seen it a few times. Yeah, I've seen you do it. You've seen it. Okay. Are you bored yet or is this interesting? It's interesting, okay. so I know what websites there are. So when you start training for your Ironman races, you know how to build a workout? I don't think I will be doing any Ironmans anytime soon. Oh. What are you, 10 now? you got eight years before you can do it and be legal, right? Eight years. Yeah, so start training now, right? I guess. Okay. <sighs> okay, so firing up Zwift. So we're going to skip syncing everything because I just want to go through and show you how. So basically when you log in, you might hit the training button. So this is where your workout should show up. So if you got it synced the day of your workout, and we're, we're not even gonna get you create a workout, you can create it in Zwift and have it in there, but it's not gonna be in training peaks if you wanna reuse it in your training plan or whatever. Or in my case, if I'm a coach, and I wanna use it for somebody else's workout, um, you can't see it. So these are all the workouts that I have created in training peaks and saved over to Zwift. So notice all these nice little workouts. But the one I just created is not automatically in there because I don't have them synced up. So this is where you pick them. So right here, you go into your workout. Export workout file. Best for Zwift. Save file. Go to where it's downloaded. So bike speed Zwift. So what we do is we copy that, go to documents, Zwift, workouts, and you have to go in the subdomain folder. I don't ask you why, but this is just how I have to do it. Paste. So now these are all the files that I've created from Training Peaks, exported into a Zwift file and put on my computer so then Zwift can find it. Um, sometimes it automatically comes through. Let's see if it comes there in here. Nope, speed, no, no, no. Let's see if I can uh, automatically show you. Uh, sometimes it takes a few restarts of the computer and it's not very friendly, but uh, we shall see. Let's see if Swift is friendly. 
So as I said, I mean, there's some comments in the in the group that if you've got uh, your account synced with Swift and Training Peaks, and I'm actually shows up and you just picking your workout workout drop down. The catch with that also is that this workout in Training Peaks has to be built in Training Peaks. So some of these workouts, like in my workout library, before I really got into it, um, they're workouts that I love. And so this is a kind of example, you know, I just have a bike Z2, 30 minutes. So when you look at that, there's nothing, there's nothing built. So if it's not built, if it's just language, there is no file to export. It will not swing with Zwift and you will not have a bike workout to do with Zwift. So if you don't have, if you don't set a workout, it won't go through. Correct. If you don't build it, if it doesn't show up with this little built workout, like this one doesn't have anything, there will be nothing in Zwift for you to do. So some of my workouts, I have a link to a, a PDF that's the workout. It tells people how to do it, but I don't have anything built. So in that case, they'd either have to build it in Zwift or, you know, in the grand scheme of things, if I did this full time, I'd have time to go back and build them all in Training Peaks, uh, which I do now going forward, but fortunately, I don't have that kind of time right now. So the moment of truth to see if it came over after I restarted, hit training, uh, power foundation, ramp up. There you go. Speed sets. There it is. I love it when it works, don't you? So that's the one we just built in one program, exported it and came over. And, and now it's in your files forever. So if you got bored and you want to go do it, you could just go pick it up later. And there's tons of other workouts already being built and people put them in there. But this, Specifically for my athletes would help them out if they want to do Zwift They can go in here and make sure they can adjust or they want to cheat. They go, oh, I want a really easy workout Or if I want it really hard But like I said, I think I put mine at like 300 or something like that. So this you're hitting 350 watts, but for 20 30 seconds so it's, it's, it's doable uh, The other trick is make sure that you are in ERG mode uh, when you are in Zwift doing a workout, uh, some of my athletes will go through and do their workouts just riding a regular path without turning ERG. So ERG will automatically um, switch over so the trainer controls the, the resistance no matter what the terrain is in the program. So here's just a little blurb about it. If you do a workout smart trainer, we have the option to use ERG mode. ERG is available and select smart trainers and set the resistance specific wattage. So if your trainer doesn't support it, you can't do it. Um, so it says use ERG mode, but I don't see that option. It might be in my settings, but I'm not gonna bore you guys with how to go through. But when you can Google it and go through it and how to use ERG, see a checkbox is using ERG in a work selection screen, pick a workout, blah, 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 start pedaling. Um, so you'll be able to tell if you start to work out. Uh, obviously, it's not hooked up on my bike right now, so we're not pedaling anywhere. Um, menu, maybe settings. I think we're losing. Yeah, we're kind of just sitting there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you had to do a little bit more digging. But make sure ERG mode is turned on. Trainer, else that workout will be extra hard. I mean, you could hit the sets, but it won't control your trainer like you want to. You'll have to manually make sure you're paying attention to the sets. Uh, so I'm just gonna ride. Uh, we're gonna trash that because we didn't do it again for our workout. So basically, that's kind of it in a nutshell. This is how I build my workouts for my athletes. So all they would need to do is hit the little export button and then take that file wherever, download it on a computer, and then drop it in their Zwift workouts. And if there's a subfolder, drop it in there. And then they should be able to go to Swift and pick it up and do it. Does that make sense? Yes, kind of. I mean, it's a little confusing when you have to put it in files, but. Yeah. So it's a little bit technical, but, you know, most people should be hopefully proficient enough to open up your Windows, your file explorer, and then be able to take it from your downloads and then drop it into Document Swift workouts. So there it is for all time. So you think you can do it? With a little help from you. Uh, maybe that'll be the next episode because I think we've taken how much time we've been on here. Oh, who knows? But anyway, so that's it in a nutshell. So any questions, uh, comment on the video, uh, send me an uh, email or something at info at set the pace triathlon.com or just comment on there and tell me I'm full of crap. So um, hope not. But anyway, thanks.